Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today we're gonna to take a look at a really interesting sample, which is a malicious RTF file, which takes advantage of a vulnerability within Microsoft's equation editor, which comes under CVE 2017-11882. This vulnerability is super interesting from the bad guy's point of view because it doesn't require any user interaction other than opening the malicious file in order for the exploit to fire. So from a victim side of things, not great. Um, and from a bad guy side of things, really cool. And especially because there's so many uh, so many proof of concepts out there. So the likes of GitHub and Metasploit have modules to, for actually generating these particular payloads. Uh, and it's a really interesting exploit for us to study and one which is gaining traction in the wild. So definitely one you want to patch against. Uh, but I'm also going to show you how you can uh, protect yourself locally against this if you uh, unable to patch or you're you're waiting for your patches to be deployed in your environment as well so this is a malicious file we're going to take a look at i'm going to show you a few different ways that you can analyze it um, first off we're going to look at it from a behavioral standpoint so i've got the malicious document here on my desktop i've got my network traffic proxy through burp suite so we can see any kind of requests here uh, through burp let me just clear the history to begin with so we can uh, just start with a clean slate and i've also got process monitor here as well uh, which if you press ctrl and l and see my filters i'm just set up to monitor for processes being created press ctrl and e to get that running uh, and all i'm going to do from a behavioral standpoint is just run the, um, the doc file, so double click the doc file, and actually now under the hood what's happening is uh, the Microsoft Word is trying to render a malicious equation which the bad guys have inserted into uh, the doc file and that has a buffer overflow vulnerability within it which the bad guys have exploited to execute code on the machine. You can see that actually what's happening is um, the, the malicious code is actually um, performing a get request to this rtf1.txt and we can see the response of that rtf1.txt is actually some code, some, some script which is returned from the bad guy C2 and then that script is going to be invoked by um, uh, the, the malware, the malicious doc, which is then going to launch PowerShell to, look to, to download another executable which is in this case the Goot Kit Bank Introsion and we can see here that uh, there's the second get request uh, which returns that executable and now my machine is infected with this particular particular bank intrusion. All I had to do from a user's perspective was just double click that malicious doc file uh, and then the exploit um, just literally fired under the hood in the context of the user, reached out to the internet and downloaded those um, uh, the, the script and then the executable. So really, really cool from a bad guy's point of view. Let's just have a look in process monitor what happened here. Uh, and let me just uh, kind of expand the view a little bit, press Control and E to stop us monitoring any further. And we can see that explorer.exe um, uh, was created when I double click the, um, the malicious doc file and then equation edit 32 was, was launched uh, as a result of uh, a malicious equ equation being inserted into the RTF file by the bad guys. And that was designed, as you can see here, to invoke mshta.exe, which we reached out to that rtf1.txt and will execute the response. So it's going to take that script, uh, which is which is uh, returned by the bad guy C2, and actually execute that script. And as you can see here, that script was designed to invoke PowerShell. So here's the, the PowerShell command, uh, and then PowerShell being invoked, and then PowerShell is then invoking uh, the response of the returned executable, which is like the weird name executable that's in the temp directory. And then that malware, so that executable, the GooKit bank intrusion, then injects itself into Microsoft Terminal Services Client, cleans itself up with a bat file, and then changes the, changes the attributes of the file itself as well as um, the, that uh, it's created in the temp file. One of the tools I like to use within Process Monitor is the Process Tree. You press Control and T, you'll just go to the Tools menu, uh, and you can see the kind of parent-child relationship between these processes firing. So you can see the Equation Editor then launched MSHTA, which then launched PowerShell, which then invoked um, the executable, which is the GooKit bank intrusion which then injected itself into Microsoft Terminal Services Client and then kind of tidied itself up as well. So super, super cool view um, of how the processes were spawned. You can also see the process lifespan and also the command line invocation as well, uh, which is all useful stuff because you've got the network indicators and we've got the process indicators that you can use to go hunting in your environment for any of these particular infections. But more importantly, you can use these IOCs uh, to protect yourself as well and get some alerting. So you might want to set up some alerting for where mshta.exe is invoked, where PowerShell is reaching out to the internet, for example, where there's kind of process injection, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's one way that you can analyze this particular sample. That's obviously behavioral analysis, and we've done that uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, and, and you can see the kind of ease of use from a bad guy's point of view of this particular exploit. So let me just uh, roll back my virtual machine here just so we can get ourselves into a clean state. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do is flip to my, uh, while that's doing that, I'm going to flip to my Remnux virtual machine where I've got the malicious file on my desktop. And actually I'm going to show you another tool that I like to use for analyzing malicious files like of this nature called RTF dump. Um, so 
RTF dump, uh, obviously it will deal with RTF files and it will show you the streams that are associated with that file. So let's just feed it the file name and we can see here all of the streams uh, that are associated with this particular file. And here's the, um, the, the vulnerable stream, uh, so the vulnerable object which has been inserted into the file, which is this um, object which invokes Microsoft's equation editor. We can see the parent of that is stream five. So what we can actually do is give that a parameter of S5 to actually view the stream. You can see the contents though are hexadecimal, so you can handily feed it the dash H parameter, the capital H, and that will treat it as hexadecimal and show you and render it in um, in ASCII. And we can see here, right, we're in the, the Microsoft Equation Editor stream, and here's the invocation to mshta.exe, uh, and here's the, um, the, the the get request to that particular text file, which then invokes uh, the script to invoke PowerShell, etc., etc. You can use RTF dump the dash D parameter and just dump that out to a dump.file, whatever, uh, and then you've got that dumped file. So if you do, um, you've got that dump file, which which is the, uh, the actual malicious object, and you can then perform some additional code analysis if you wish to. What I'm going to do though is flip back to my Windows machine here and I'm going to show you a way that I like to, uh, or I've recently been starting to use um, this GFlag program, which is um, a program which comes as part of the Windows SDK environment. So you, this is something that you can install from the Microsoft website. You download uh, the Windows SDK setup, and then you can choose to install the Windows um, debugging tools. And part of those tools is this program called GFlags. And if we if we run GFlags, it gives us loads of stuff that we can use. And what we're interested in here is go to the image file tab. I'm going to type in equation edit 32.exe because that's the process that we're interested in. Uh, press tab to get this stuff active. And I'm going to tick the box for debugger and I'm going to feed it a file path of my x64 debugger uh, or x32 in this case uh, executable. And what that means is let me just get it from the security tab here to get the, the full, uh, full name of that particular binary. And we can copy that into there, press apply. What that means is any time that that process is going to spawn, so equation edit 32 spawns, it will actually invoke the debugger instead. So we can then poke around um, the, uh, the process and see what's going on. Also, just to save myself from infecting my virtual machine over and over in case we do want to perform some further analysis, I'm going to flip to host only mode uh, just so I can, um, can we can kind of see the exploit fire but not actually infect ourselves with, uh, with GooKit anymore. So let's open the doc file and hopefully what should happen now that we've uh, used global flags or G flags is that here we see that x32dbg is fired up for is because equation edit 32 uh, was invoked and it's attached itself to that process and then set a breakpoint on itself uh, at the entry point of that process. Now, if you read the blog posts about this particular exploit, and I'm going to link those to you in the description of this video, uh, you'll notice that what the bad guys are doing, they're taking advantage of a buffer overflow uh, vulnerability uh, whereby a font name is copied into a buffer, which only is meant to hold about 28 bytes but that, uh, the length of that buffer is not checked and therefore the, the bad guys have inserted code up to the, up to 48 bytes into that buffer which overflows the return value of that particular function uh, and then that means that um, the code is then redirected to an attacker controlled um, location uh, and in this case it actually uses winexec which is used within this binary, used within this process already uh, but the parameter to winexec which will execute um, code on the machine, the parameter to that is obviously the bad guy's code which is um, mshta.exe to, to then reach out to the internet to go and get that uh, malicious script. So let me just kind of uh, clear my history here in, in Burp Suite just so we can kind of see that happening. Because we know it's WinExec, if we wanted to, what we could do is set a breakpoint on that. If you wanted to go searching for it, it lives in the uh, kernel 32 um, DLL. So let me just search for kernel 32. We can just get that from here and uh, type WinExec and we can see it uh, as one of the exports, we can press F2 to set a breakpoint, and we can then run uh, We can then run Equation Editor, and hopefully it will run to the point where um, it, will, it, it reaches out uh, to WinExec, which will be in the attacker, the attacker code, right? So we can then start poking around to see what exactly what they were doing. Sometimes you kind of have to kickstart. You can see we've got this weird error message because it's waiting um, for, Microsoft Word is waiting for something to happen. And let's just go back to our debugger. We can see that actually our breakpoint is fired here on kernel 32 WinExec. Now I'm in the kernel 32 module, right? I don't really want to uh, debug that particular module uh, because obviously it's not the attacker code, but you can see here, right, what's happened. You can see in EDX, we've got this, 
this uh, MSP Gothic parameter. Um, so let, let's just follow what's in uh, the dump from EDX. And yes, you can see that it's MS Gothic, whatever, uh, but actually you can see the rest of the, the bad guy's code being inserted here into that particular um, register, which is MSHTA, and then the IP address of the text file that's, that uh, is gonna be reached out to. It's not happened yet because WinExec hasn't actually executed, so we don't see the connection in Burp Suite just yet, but look at EBP as well. So right, as part of the buffer overflow, which has already occurred, so the, this is we're already at the return address of where the bad guys have overflowed the buffer, um, and we're at the point of them executing their, their code, but you can see as part of that, you can see that they've overwritten uh, EBP with 41414141, and anytime you see uh, a string of 41, 41s together, uh, that is uh, very, very characteristic of, a, of buffer, buffer overflow occurring. So actually what's gonna happen is, um, once WinExec has uh, taken effect, um, the uh, return from uh, this particular function is, is gonna uh, look at EBP and, um, and go, well, hey, I don't know where I am, and we're probably gonna get a crash of some stage, which is, I think, what we saw in our behavioral analysis from equation edits point of view, but that doesn't matter because actually what's already occurred under the hood is the execution of the bad guy's code, which is uh, the invocation of, MH, uh, of MSHTA. So what we can actually do is just uh, press, um, we can press control and F9 just to go to the return where this um, function would actually return. And we can see here that already, right, when um, going through um, um, going through the process for WinExec, we can see that that has in fact in, um, invoked the MSHTA to reach out to the internet to go and get this text file. Now, I'm not connected to the internet because we switched to host only, therefore I'm not gonna infect my machine again, so that's great. What, we, what if you wanted to, again, from the blog posts, you can actually go and poke around where this vulnerable buffer is to see exactly what the bad guys are doing to actually uh, uh, overflow um, the, the particular buffer itself. And what you'll find is it's where it copies in this uh, font name. So I'll, I'll post the links in the descriptions of this video. So where it copies in, when Equation Editor loads up, it copies in the font name into this particular buffer. But if you overflow it with um, you know more than 28 bytes, in this case, it's it's 38, uh, sorry, 48 bytes, um, you'll be able to overwrite the return address of that particular function. And one of the blog posts I'll link you to is the Palo Alto Networks analysis of this particular um, uh, of this particular exploit, which is really cool. And actually, it follows along very, very similar in this particular sample to the code that they're actually analyzing in their, uh, in their screenshots as well. So you can see the actual buffer, uh, which is being overflowed, uh, is where um, we can see it just down here where um, at 411650, and in fact, if I go to that particular location here, press Control and G, 411, 650. Uh, we can see this is the actual uh, buffer. If I set a breakpoint, and in fact, let me just exit the debugger and we'll do it all over again just so we can kind of breakpoint on that buffer. Uh, let me clear the history just so it's nice and clear. Press the uh, invoke the um, equation editor into the debugger again, we'll press F9, and we can see that, right, we've hit our breakpoint for this, this particular buffer, which is a 28 byte buffer. Well, first off, it's gonna copy in Times New Roman. The, the length of the buffer is being stored in ECX, and we can see here that the value of 10 is there, which is actually 16 uh, in, uh, in decimal, uh, and that fits in uh, the string Times New Roman uh, with, a, with a new line character as well uh, into the buffer, so that's great. Press F9 again, we can see the symbol. Press F9 again, there's courier, Press F9 again, and we've got this weird stuff going on. So we can see the length of, of the buffer now in ECX is a little bit larger than 28, right? So we've got uh, we've got a 30, uh, 30 in hex is 48. And so we've got a 48 uh, byte um, string or whatever being inserted into that particular buffer. And let's have a look at EDX, right? So let's follow EDX in the dump. Well, there it is. There is the attacker code, which is the um, the invocation to MSHTA. So if we if we continue to run that and press F9, we now get um, the execution to win exec. So we, we, we've now overflowed the buffer and we've overflowed the return value of that function. And we're now at the point where we're at win exec and the parameter to win exec, as you can see here, it's all been pushed to the stack is indeed that uh, attacker controlled um, uh, code. So it's, it's then gonna execute MSHTA. So that's another method that you can use to protect yourself, uh, sorry, to, to examine this particular um, um, uh, exploit. Now let's talk about protecting yourself against this particular exploit and something that you can do, let me just close stuff out here uh, and let's come out of G-Flags as well. In fact, let me, why don't I just roll back my virtual machine uh, just to a nice clean state and we can perform some um, uh, we, we can uh, perform the analysis again, but this time what we're gonna do is actually update the registry to protect ourselves against this particular uh, exploit from occurring. Now, what, what I'll do, let me just load my text editor here. There's a couple of registry entries that you can use, which are detailed in the various blog posts, but I'll, again, I'll link them in the description. 
So just depending on whether you've got um, what uh, version of Office and whether you're running 32-bit Office on a 64-bit machine, which I am, for example, which so in this case, I'm gonna use this particular registry uh, string uh, or registry update just to update this particular location and registry. Uh, and this will actually disable uh, Microsoft Equation Editor from, uh, from firing. So let me just add that. We can see the operation is completed successfully. Just for good measure, just in case, right? Just in case I've got the wrong version or whatever, I'm gonna do them both. Um, in fact, I don't think I need to. Let me, let me just run it and see how this gets on, right? So we've done that uh, update to the registry. Let me get Process Monitor running again. Uh, and hopefully we can see that in this particular instance that uh, the exploit won't actually fire. So we'll double click the file and we can see that Word opens. Hopefully we won't see any get requests in Burp Suite um, other than obviously the Office stuff which is occurring. Hopefully it will load up and actually the equation editor process won't actually be allowed to spawn. So we can see that it's opened. I don't see any get requests. And if I have a look in process monitor, yeah, equation editor didn't even spawn because I've disabled it in the registry. Now that's something that you could push out really, really quickly in your environment if you weren't patched from Office. You definitely want to get installed the patches from Office because that's the best way to protect yourselves, but that's something that you can do locally um, and really, really quickly to help protect yourself against this particular exploit. So I hope you found that useful. I, I've definitely enjoyed studying this particular exploit and there's some really good blog posts again, which I'll link to you in the description. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then press like. If you loved it, then subscribe to the channel and you can also follow me on Twitter at CyberCDH and I look forward to speaking to you. Thanks guys. Cheers.